All good science starts here, with a hypothesis. For Dr. Ken Cooper, he wanted to know, is exercise good for your health? This one question would change the world, but first, he had to prove it. Does it really pay to exercise in terms of reducing the risk of heart disease? Dr. Cooper's idea was so revolutionary, people didn't believe him, including Barbara Walters among many, who called him a fraud. Dr. Cooper knew it would take data to answer the tough questions. That's why he created the Cooper Institute, a nonprofit research institute in 1970. Collecting data started with this 12-minute Cooper test, something Dr. Cooper started developing while in the Air Force. It's this research that caught the attention of the Brazilian soccer team back in the 70s. They were competing in the World Cup and wanted to be ready. In 1970, the team's cardiovascular stamina in the second half of the World Cup made the difference. Brazil won, and the sports world took notice. The Cooper name is a household word throughout Brazil because he helped to train the 1970 and 1974 World Cup soccer teams. Dr. Cooper's concepts went on to help everyone from the Packers to the Falcons, Dallas Mavericks, Cowboys, even FIFA over the years. Then, in 1989, after nearly two decades after opening the Cooper Institute, a landmark paper proved only 30 minutes of exercise a day can make a difference. That, quote, fitness reduces mortality from all causes by 58% and can increase longevity by six years. The Cooper Institute proved its hypothesis. Exercise is medicine. In 1995, the Cooper Institute released research about midlife fitness. Turns out, it's never too late to start. Staying active means 34% less chronic kidney disease, that people are 32% less likely to die from cancer after age 65, and there's a 55% lower risk of lung cancer and a 44% reduced risk of colorectal cancer. I read a book by Dr. Kenneth Cooper, and it was a highly motivational book. I started running the next day. Orville Rogers started running at 50 years old after reading Dr. Cooper's how-to book, Aerobics. And I've run a little over 42,500 miles in the last 50 years. He went on to compete in his first USA track and field race at 90 years old. Orville set 15 world records before passing away at 101 years of age. Dr. Cooper says one day when he grows up like Orville, he hopes to enjoy this highest quality of life. Should a woman exercise? Is aerobic exercise fit for a lady? The Cooper Institute researched women before anyone else even considered it. In 1972, Millie Cooper co-authored Aerobics for Women, a how-to book for women to get healthy. And in the 80s, she attended international women's conferences specifically on health. Millie Cooper knew, maybe better than anyone else, Dr. Cooper's hypothesis was his purpose. So when financial pressures and negativity from the medical community challenged the mission, Millie stood firm, the cheerleader, the wife, and mother who knew that studies like post-menopause and exercise and osteoporosis and fitness would make a difference. In 2016, the American Heart Association honored Millie with its largest award of the year for her global efforts for women's health. More than 10 million kids have kept moving in part because of the Cooper Institute. In 1982, Fitnessgram, a play on the telegram, started in schools to communicate important health information to kids, teachers, and families. This program tracked fitness and encouraged healthy choices. Why? Cooper Institute studies showed exercise improves academic performance and decreases discipline problems. That means better grades and fewer dropouts. This research was so monumental, lawmakers changed legislation in 2007 to bring physical education back into schools through Senate Bill 530. Cooper Institute advocates spent years pushing for this change to fight for our kids. Then in 2016, the NFL gets involved with Play 60. The Cooper Institute is a driving force behind why. Its research shows kids who are active for 60 minutes are healthier and could potentially reverse the prevalence of obesity. 
Trans fats are bad, especially for your cholesterol. We know that now, but in 2002, PepsiCo approached Dr. Cooper. Company leadership wanted to know how to improve its products for public health. Dr. Cooper said, get rid of the trans fats. Thanks to the work of Dr. Cooper, Frito-Lay made this bold move with the rest of the industry following suit. It is predicted this one change prevented hundreds of thousands of heart attacks. PepsiCo went on to work with Dr. Cooper, the foremost expert on health, nutrition, and exercise in the world, to expand its product portfolio to include new functional foods and beverages. Things that are good for your heart are good for your brain. Cooper Institute researchers started studying brain health back in the early 2000s. They found that fitness positively affects depression, dementia, and memory. People who exercise more reduce the risk of Alzheimer's by 36%. Fitness also prevents depression and keeps the memory sharp. Time Magazine published this video sharing the Cooper Institute's findings that active people are 16% less likely to experience depression. Vitamin D is also a key player in memory. Studies show low vitamin D is associated with a 26% more likely chance to have an abnormal memory test and high fitness reduces that same risk by 40%. In a world of isolation during the pandemic, depression and mental health concerns are growing exponentially. That's where the Cooper Institute comes in to research, learn, and improve the quality of life. Cardiovascular disease remains the leading cause of death around the world. It will cost the U.S. an estimated $95 trillion to prevent and treat these diseases by 2050. The long-term viability of this country starts with fitness. We are in a healthcare crisis, and the Cooper Institute's research is the solution. It is our job to incorporate this research into our daily lives. It's game-changing. Numbers like staying active now reduces Medicare costs by 40% later in life. 50 years of the Cooper Institute is big, but it's just the start. This can't be a moment, it's a movement. The challenge to protect the health of this country is paramount. From what we eat to how we move, now is the time to rally. Saving lives takes research, it takes science, it takes you, because now we know fitness is a vital sign.